In this video, we want to use complex numbers to find roots of unity in finite fields. And our first example will be eighth roots of unity in the complex numbers. So we see here the unit circle and an equilateral octagon within it and all these various values which are eighth roots of unity. And what we want to do is translate these eighth roots of unity into values in a finite field. Now we will need to choose that finite field wisely because not in all finite fields will we find all of these roots here. So we will need to choose a finite field such that n divides q minus 1, where n is the root we're looking for, so in this case the eighth root, and q is the number of elements in the field. So if we were to choose 17 for q, that would work out, right, because 8 divides 16 evenly. So let's use the field f17 and we will translate these values from C into F17. So here is the multiplication table for F17 and here are the values that we want to translate. So let's take a look at some easy ones first. If we want to translate the 1, we could also translate that as a 1 since there is a 1 in F17. Now, this looks a little more difficult in I. We don't know what that would be. But we do see a negative 1. Well, we could just write that as a negative 1. Or if we wanted, we could add 17 to that and just say that's the element 16. But for all the rest of these, we're going to need a bit more information. So when we are in the complex numbers, square root of 2 is obviously equal to 1.414 something something something, right? But when we translate that into F17, we mean something else. We mean one of the values of F17, of course, that when multiplied with itself gives us 2. So why don't I now mark this diagonal, which is what shows us, oh, there's a 2, uh, which values are squares. There's another two. And then we can choose a value that when multiplied with itself gives us a two. So there's one, so we could use six. And there's another one, or we could use eleven. So let's use six. Let's say the square root of two is six. Okay, but then we're also going to need to deal with this i. So i in the complex numbers means the square root of negative 1, right? Well, in F17 it also means the square root of negative 1, which we can write as the square root of 16, right? Since negative 1 is equal to 16 in F17. So we could use, here's a 16, so we could use 4, or we also could have used 13, right? But we'll stick with a 4. So now let's use these values to quickly determine how we want to translate all of these values into F17. So the square root of 2, we said was 6, divided by 2, plus, again, 6 divided by 2, times i, i we said was 4, which is 3 plus 3 times 4, so we get the answer 15. i we said was equal to 4, so that's easy. Mm, square root of 2 over 2 with a negative sign in front, so this one is basically the same as here, just with a different sign. So in other words, I could just write negative 3 plus 3 times 4, which would be 9. 
this is just more of the same, right? This time with two negative signs. So negative 3 minus 3 times 4, which would be negative 15, which in F17 we could write as 2, right? Negative i, okay, we said i was equal to 4, so that would be negative 4. Or adding 17, we could say that is equal to 13. And here we have, of course, more, more of the same. So that would be this time a positive 3 minus 3 times 4, which would be negative 9, which we could also write as 8. Okay, in other words, our solution set would be, just looking at each one of these answers here that we got, would be 1, 15, 4, 9, 16, 2, 13, and 8. And just because that looks like a jumbled mess of randomness, I'm going to write that again. Because I see here a 1 and a 16, which is a negative 1. Turns out I can write this all in a different way. I see a 2 and a 15, which is a negative 2, right? So plus minus 2. And it turns out you can write a plus minus 4 and a plus minus 8. So that looks a lot better to my eye. Plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 4, plus minus 8 just powers of 2. So we should now test whether these are indeed 8th roots of unity, right? So we want to know if each one of them to the 8th power is equal to 1. So I've taken the liberty of calculating that already. So obviously plus or minus 1 to the 8th power is going to give us 1. And it turns out that plus or minus 2 to the 8th power you can rewrite as 2 to the 4th squared, etc., etc., and we get a 1. Same thing goes for plus or minus 4 and plus or minus 8. To make a long story short, they are indeed 8th roots of unity. So, that wasn't so hard, was it? Let's look at a somewhat more difficult case. So again, we are dealing with the complex numbers. We have here this time an equilateral triangle with the cube roots of unity. And we want to translate these cube roots of unity into a finite field. And again, we will need to choose our field wisely so that all of these values are indeed in the field. So n needs to divide q minus 1. Since we are in, since we are dealing with cubes, rather, n is 3, so 3 must divide q minus 1. How about we say q is 7? Because 3 divides 6. So we could deal with the field f7. Now, of course, we could have chosen something like, let's say, f11, right? And said, well, we want to translate these in f11. But since n, which in our case again is 3, does not divide. 11 minus 1, so being 10, then not all of these values will be there. Right? Obviously, the 1 will still be there and will be able to be translated from the complex numbers to f11, but these other values will be missing, so a translation would not work. So let's stick with our choice of f7. We want to translate these values from the complex numbers to f7. So there we see our multiplication table for F7. And here are the values we want to translate. Again, 1 can be translated as 1. And now we can start rewriting this stuff. So negative 1 half plus, now we just need the square root of 3. right? So let's just look at our diagonal again, and we'll just look for the 3. Where is the 3? Looking for the 3. <laughs> it's not there, right? There's no 3. What are we going to do now? So, square root of 3 is missing in action. Now the i, what about the i? Well, i, square root of negative 1. Square root of, right, negative 1 in f7 would be 6, so square root of 6. Okay, looking for the 6. Also no 6. We have no square root of 3 and no square root of 6. What are we going to do? Well, 
in this case we might want to multiply before we simplify. In other words, if we write that indeed as square root of 3 and the square root of negative 1, then we can just multiply these two together and get the square root of negative 3. And since negative 3 in the field F7 is equal to 4, we could also just write that here as the square root of 4. And if we look back, we do indeed see square root of 4 being 2. And another option here would be the 5. Let's go with the 2 for now. So that would mean we have negative 1 half plus 2 over 2, right? Well, why, we just write that as a 1. So our answer is 1 half. Hmm. Somehow that is not so satisfying, since there is no 1 half in F7. So we will need to deal with this maybe in the following way. We will remember that 1 over 2 is simply an abbreviation for 1 times the multiplicative inverse of 2. And while it is true that in R, in the real numbers, the multiplicative inverse of 2 is equal to 0 0.5, that is of course not the case in F7. Here we're looking for the number 4, since 2 times 4 is equal to 8, and mod 7 gives us 1. So, since I can multiply 2 times 4 and get 1, 4 is the multiplicative inverse of 2, so I end up with 1 times 4, and that is 4 itself. So the next number to be translated is pretty much the same thing, right? You just have a minus sign, so why don't we just subtract 1 instead of adding 1? And we end up with negative 3 halves. Again, not such a satisfactory answer. We could use our trick from before, that is looking at the multiplicative inverse of 2, but let's look at a different trick. We can also just rewrite this negative 3, right? We're dealing with an odd number right now. We could just translate that into an even number. So we could add 7, since as we noted before, negative 3 is equal to 4. We'll just write 4 over 2, and we have our answer 2. So we've seen now that our answers for the cube roots of unity and F7 are 1, 4, and 2. But what would have happened if we would have done something a little bit differently? What if we would have chosen 5? What if we would have said the square root of 4 is equal to 5? Let's see what would have happened. So this obviously would not have changed. 1 still gets sent to 1. But here we would have negative 1 half plus, right, and that turned out to be just the square root of 4, right? So the square root of 4 over 2 and now what we're saying is that the square root of 4 is equal to 5. So we'll see what sort of answer we'd get. But before we get an answer, we're again at an impasse because, again, we have these fractions. So a negative 1 half and a 5 halves. We could use trick number 1, which was the multiply by the multiplicative inverse. Or we could use trick number 2 which would be to convert these numbers that are odd into even ones, or in, in more generally something that we can divide into. Or in this case, we could just add before we simplify. So 5 plus negative 1 is, of course, 4. And we end up with a 2. And if we do this last example here, with the only difference being the sign, it's just minus 5 halves, right? So minus 5 halves, we get negative 6 over 2, which is negative 3, and as we saw above, negative 3 is equal to 4 in F7. So, 
Our answer this time is 1, 2, and 4. Wow, it's the same answer. But if we look closely, we did not arrive at that answer in the same order, right? The first time, we got the 1, and then the 4, and then the 2. And the second time, we got the 1, and then the 2, and then the 4. So a slightly different order, owing to the fact that we chose a different square root of 2. Now, in a field like the reals, there is what we might call the principal square root, right? So if I had a square root of 4, I would know if someone said they wanted another principal square root, well, I know that they're talking about 2. I know they're not talking about negative 2, but I also know that if I multiply negative 2 times negative 2, I would get 4, right? So there's a certain convention that we would use for a number of reasons, so that we would, one of them being, so that we know what we're talking about when someone says the square root of 4, right? So that's a little bit different in finite fields. There's no real way to say that 2 is a better square root or a more real one than 5. And owing to that fact, there's a certain amount of ambiguity when we write something like the square root of 4. And that leads to us getting this answer in a different order. But as we saw, it gave us the same answer, and we should check that quickly. It is the case that 1 to the third is 1, that 2 to the third is also 1, and 4 to the third mod 7 is also 1, right? So in any case, we got the correct answer. So now we've seen a few pitfalls and a couple of solutions for these pitfalls when using complex numbers to find roots of unity in finite fields.